Welcome back to the Director's Garage Snowball Fight. Come on, guys, it's the dead of winter. <laughs> I'm your host and resident idiot, Michael. And today, folks, I have another flagship headphone. I can't wait to reveal this thing. We're going to do a sound impression, give them a first listen. But first, some major product announcements you will only hear right here on the Director's Garage. It's courtesy of our friends at Noble Audio. And it's a Director's Garage exclusive! 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 exclusive. Well, that was weird. Headlines. Get your headlines. First up, a brand new gorgeous IEM called the Ronin. Oh. And it is impressive. Check out this driver count. Four Sonyon balanced armatures, four Knowles balanced armatures, both great brands. And, wait for it, an additional four more Sony and electrostatic drivers. That's 12 drivers per side for a total of 24 drivers in these tiny IEMs. And it comes with a super high-end one-off cable from Elitech. Noble has been killing it on cables lately. The last three of theirs have just been spectacular. Now, a special shout out to John Sun Siam, who created that animation you just saw for the product announcement. Creativity runs in that family. John also told me that the new Ronin will ultimately be a full line of IEMs that will oppose their other flagship line, the Khan line. The Kubla Khan is their current flagship. Well, that uses dynamic drivers in a super tweeter, pitting the two approaches against each other just as the Khans and the Ronins did hundreds of years ago. Next, Noble has a brand new true wireless IEM. It's called the Mystique. <laughs> now, sonically, this is Noble pushing the envelope on Bluetooth sound quality. It's got a robust bass featuring a dynamic driver for the bottom end, two Knowles balanced armatures for the mids and treble. John says it gets better phone reception than their previous flagship Bluetooth, talking about the Noble Focus Pro, and it has a pass-through feature in addition to taking calls. Now, they'll be taking prestige orders, and those, if you order it come with a charge case and the IEM shell, both made out of wood. That's such exciting stuff, but that's nothing compared to what I'm about to open up today. Now, I gotta point out, yes, I bought what's in this box with my own money, but Noble did do me a solid and gave me one significant, and I mean significant, discount. And I can't thank them enough. It's companies like Noble and Audio46 and your subscriptions that keep this show going. I, I so appreciate John and his son, Siam, his brother, Jim, and his son, Kai. These guys are artists who have a genuine passion for producing IEMs with the best sound quality they know how to do. They're also terrific fun to talk to, and if you make it to an audio show, you gotta stop by their booth. They've become really good friends of mine. What's in the box? Yeah, guys, it's time to grip it and rip it. Let's get going. But I don't think that I actually need much to grip and rip, although there's some tape here. But let's just... Wah! Hand... Oh. And we'll see what, it, oh my God, it's right there. It's right there. It's the Noble Audio Viking Ragnar. Yes, it's the Noble Audio Viking Ragnar. $4,000 worth of flagship in a box. And we're gonna start our journey with them today. Two 10 millimeter dynamic drivers pushing the base, four Knowles balanced armatures for the mid base and mids, and then four electrostatic drivers for the upper mids, treble, and beyond. This is an IEM John first told me about earlier in the year, and when I asked him what does it sound like, he deadpanned the best headphone. 
And I think we're about to experience the best IEM in the world right now. But we can't get there till we take some plastic off, right? So what do you say we dig in and try not to cut my finger off? Oh, I love the smell of fresh headphones. Yeah, and check it out. It's going to be a magnetic flip case. Check this out. Look at that. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And yes, it's a one hell of a Pelican case, isn't it? Noble has been doing this with all their high-end IEMs. It's not like I'm ever actually going to take this with me if I go on a trip. But man, I mean... You're not worried about breaking nothing with this, but the cool thing is, is it's gonna give us a presentation here that I think y'all are gonna wanna see. Now, are you ready? Cause we're gonna get something when I open this box. Wow! Oh, oh man, look at this, look at this. Man, these things are killer. Man, that's better than my face, I think, right? Oh. Now, these housings are aluminum. This is aluminum right here, and it gives way to this faceplate, which is Damascus steel, some of the most expensive steel you can buy in the world, and it's etched. It's etched kind of like a wood grain, it looks like to me. It's really stunning in person, and it's done by a guy named Chris Plouffe. He's a master jeweler, and Noble's been working with this guy for a long time. Now, I also know about this cable because I'm infatuated with good cables. The cable is four core graphene it's a four down to two but it's a very thick cable and it feels super nice in the hands i gotta appreciate that so let's check out what comes in this case with these headphones and you get a, a noble soft velvety case and then you get some silicone tips and some foam tips and a cleaner brush all kind of thrown into one little package here you get some noble straps for putting your little iem shit together and you get a, oh my God, this thing's heavy. A Ragnar Viking card, a silver card. Membership has its privileges. Yeah, signed by the wizard on the back and you get a nice wizard sticker. This headphone, I think, represents the best of everything Noble has learned about making IEM since the company's inception. And I think it's time we gotta give these things a listen, don't you think? Now, because these things are about the same size as my Noble Audio Sultan, I've opted to go with the Deconi Bullets for the tips because they were my go-to of choice at the time that I got rid of the Sultan weeks ago. Now, I've wired these into the WA-11 Topaz because this is my DAC of choice when it comes to IEMs. And then I'm going to use the included 4.4 Pentacon to go into the cable with its graphene and silverness that looks so nice. And I'm gonna get things started today with a little bit of Cat Stevens. I'm going to be going to Teaser and the Fire Cat, and the first song I want to hear is called Peace Train. Really like this one. Okay, I'm on high power, and holy God, these things are detailed. Whoa! Holy shit. Okay. Um, super good low sub. Super good low sub. Like, it's it's down and robust. Not overdriving. I'm I'm shocked at the upper treble range. Um, I'm talking about the part above, like, I'm talking like 10,000 and above. All that detail is insane, and it's presenting in sort of a 3D space in front of me. It's really a mind mess. I, I'm really impressed with what I'm hearing out of the gate. It's like it's sensory overload. There's so much coming at me. Um, these things are rendering a lot of data and, and blowing it into my brain all at once. And it's it's alluring but i'm like i'm just taking it in right now because it's like it's like almost an assault on senses but it's not a wall of sound effect like you would normally think of like these things would get in your face 
but it's not. It's like a thousand points of sound around you that's just like coming in and, and like alerting you that there's, hey, there's a little bit of a, a, a guitar pick over here and some claps and then... You've got the the chorus coming in from way over here. It's a really sensory overload situation. Uh, I can't say I've heard an IEM quite like this before. And it's it's good. It's just like, I, I almost don't know what to make of it. It's There's so much happening. Dynamics are sensational. Like I'm getting a... The little, the slightest changes, and keep in mind, uh, Cat Stevens has this delivery that's kind of like this. So it, it it goes loud and soft and loud and soft, but it's it's really like you can hear every slight variance in dynamics, in sound volume, closeness to the mic, proximity effect. Wow, it's really an exciting, exciting sound. If you're looking for a casual, like, hey, I'm going to be laid back and listening to tunes on my IEMs, that's not this. This is like, got everything. It's got everything. It's all frequencies, all sounds, all at once, in various planes and in tons of detail, just gobs of detail. I mean, I thought I was getting crazy detail out of the Sisfara last week. This seems like it's even more... I mean, I have to do ba a being, but this seems like it's even more engaged because it's so in your head. Uh, this is just crazy. Okay, got to go to another song. But wow, what a start. What a start. All right, next up, I'm going to go to Rush. I haven't done a Rush song in a long time on the show. And I'm going to go to Red Barchetta because it's this awesome, cool, vibey feeling of a, guy, of a kid who finds an old car. I don't know if it belonged to his uncle or something. And they get in and they start up this car after a lot of years and they go driving. And it's all, but it's very modern. It's a very, very modern song. Oh. Guys, this sub bass is crazy big, but it's not overdriving. What I can tell you is that this is not the Sultan by any stretch of the imagination. This is a an entirely different sounding headphone. The Sultan's was smoother and it was more like laid back and it was more of like Hey, buddy, you want to watch a movie? Hey, buddy, you want to... This is like, I'm going to show you into the music something that you haven't heard before. And if the, the... It sounds like there's a big treble shelf above 10K, and if they had extended that a little bit lower, these things would be piercing and unlistenable. They've just nicked around that part that would grate on your, on your hearing. And it's giving it a lot of detail. Like you're just hearing every little treble nuance is there and it's highlighted. And it's just like, it is sensory overload and it's spectacular. They produced a spectacle of a headphone in the IEM in the Ragnar. And there's soundstage to this. It's very interesting. Stuff is moving in and out. Very cool. Like the little pitch harmonics are right in close. And then we're out here. And it's a little more this way, I think, than this way. Neil Peart's kick drums, there's so much impact with them. It's almost like one of the steepest V's you could imagine. Like there's so much coming in super down low, but it doesn't really extend into the mid bass that much. It seems like by the mid bass, that bass boost mellows. And I've heard this in a number of headphones in tuning lately, and I think it's a good move. Because you don't get that over bass dominance, which I kind of like sometimes, <laughs> to being frank. Uh, 
But for balance and listening to music and to your favorite tracks, it's not the best thing always. But you can, I got some power going on in these things. Now I've got this on high power mode. I should probably drop it down to low power mode and listen there. I'm gonna do that right now. On the side, I can drop this down. There, now I've got a lot more play in the volume knob. Because before it was like I just cracked that volume knob. Now it's like, which tells me these are a fairly efficient IEM. But boy, pinpoint image and soundstage. Like, <laughs> you gotta love it. Now I jump forward to Limelight, and that bass line is, God, it's good. It's so intense and so heavy, but not overdriving. It's, it's got control. Whereas the Sultan was more like, I'm letting it out and pushing it forward in a very good way. This has got a little more control. Very good. But they're fast. These things are lightning fast. Boy, the way these drivers are all moving together, you can feel it. There's, there is such synergy. I'm going to now switch it up and I'm going to go to some jazz and I'm going to go to Lee Morgan. And this is an album called Standards. And this is God Bless the Child. There really is a sense of depth of layers to the sound. I'm really hearing like some horns closer up and then his trumpet is more middle. Herbie Hancock's piano is further away. Wow, it's really a special recording. Yeah, the layering is really impressive on this headphone. You really do get a sense of space. For an IEM, it's impressive. It's very impressive. I've heard over your closed headphones that don't do this well. All right. I'm going to go to some talking heads now. I'm going to go listen to the Remain in Light album. It's my favorite of theirs. And I just love the soundstage on this one, too. There's stuff happening all over on the image. And this is not disappointing. It's really... It's a full experience and a big show. Mm. And I'm on a once in a lifetime, which I love because of the Tom hits that strike at 10 and two on the right mix. It just drives the song and gives it a, a talking heads type of swing. These are really letting you peer into music in a different way, and I'm really thoroughly impressed. The bass is so solid and tight. Like, it's not missing at all. And there's tremendous impact, but there's a restraint going on that I really appreciate. What I really appreciate, I guess, about this headphone is that it's got surprises with everything it, it's it been showing me, everything it's been presenting. It's done in a little bit of an unexpected way. There's a lot of pop. There, the dynamics are that good. I'm getting a lot of pops of excitement tossed at me, and it, it's got angles and and life and liveliness. In fact, I want to go to a live track. I want to go to that live Hotel California. Uh, this is off of that Hell Freezes Over album. just want to get a sense of how a live crowd feels. I had a couple of records I could go to. Mm. Deep slam. Deep slam. It just shake the back of your head. The sub is so thick. It's incredible. It's incredible that they're doing it without it blooming over and muddying up the rest of the bass. It's such a common mistake I hear when I get a good deep sub. 
Oh, so good. Okay. The, you just hear the layers of the crowd. What a great headphone for listening to live music. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Leonard Skinner. I'm gonna go one more from the road, and I'm gonna check out Tuesday's Gone. Which is a nice, beautiful ballad from Leonard Skinner. It's a big stadium concert. You can hear, you can feel it being. It's I don't know if it's outdoors or not, but it sounds like a great outdoor concert. And then some random Tom off to the side suddenly. It's it's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna be. This is gonna be a three-hour recording if I don't shut this thing down. So I'm gonna pause it right here. Um, wow. Uh, what an experience and and what a headphone. I've heard headphones like this before that become sensory overload. Like they become too much. And I don't know. Maybe these will be too much down the road. My initial impressions are like, wow, what an experience. It's, they, there is tons and tons of detail in an amazing soundstage with layers. So stuff is like coming at you from far and up close and surrounding you. You've got incredible deep down sub that's just soul pushing. And then you've got incredible detail on the top. And I could maybe say at some point that may get fatiguing, but I'm not there yet. It's so, such an interesting new way I've heard some of these songs today that I'm not ready to say that. I want to I want to spend some time with these because it's amazing. I also want to listen to them at some normal volumes and pull out some average songs. I pulled out stuff that's got that I know is really well recorded. I just want to hear what that how how it goes on a normal track. But what I've heard out of the gate is new territory. These are not Noble Audio Sultans next level this is a different thing entirely and i'm thoroughly impressed and to be fair for what these things cost i probably should be so that's the noble audio ragnar and based on this first listen i i can't say that i've heard anything better in an iem before it's a different take but what they've been able to pull out of this technically is spectacular. It's got some Odin traits to it, but the Odin had problems of becoming a little grating. These don't. It's new territory. And I got to give a special shout out to the entire Noble Audio team, John, Jim, Siam, and, and Kai Noble, plus Chris Plouffe for another amazing knockout design. Everyone over there who works at producing the best products, I think, in the IEM world. You can pick them up at Audio 46, where the coupon code Director's Garage can knock an extra 5% off the cost. There's just something special about owning one of these nobles it's like owning a fine bentley finely crafted stuff that's built with the purpose of being the best of its kind all right next up we are getting back on the sisfara train we're going for one more ride I've been listening to that Sisvara a lot through the new Bakun 13R, at least new to me. You all have chimed in with your thoughts, and now I'm going to break down the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> I'll be talking about other headphones I've used on this terrific amp and how it differs from the Ferrum Orstack, the impressive amp and power supply combo I bought last year. So make sure you've hit the subscribe button and done all the things to avoid that dreaded FOMO situation. Now, thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I hope you enjoyed this noble episode. Consider giving it a thumbs up, or you can smash it if that's what you're into. I can't say I blame you either way, and I will see you 
before you know it. 